Hey guys, welcome to Ace Aoshima's Authentic Samurai Channel. I'm your host, Ace Aoshima. And today we'll be going over how to wear a samurai helmet like the professionals. I mean, in terms of historical accuracy, it's very difficult to give you one answer because, you know, the, how you wear the helmet depends on which time period, which region, or what kind of samurai helmet style we're talking about. But in terms of movie shoots, there's a standard method we always use, and that's the one I'd like to share with you guys today. And this episode consists of two parts, first being the trivia, and the second being the how-to. So if you're only interested in the how-to part, you can skip right ahead in the description menu to the part two section. All right, without further ado, let's check it out. So here we are with a Samurai Helmet replica, and uh, due to budgeting reasons, it's a DIY helmet made by yours truly but uh, this will suffice. When you Google Samurai Helmet, you often see the strap bundled up like looking like this or this. And while these are valid method for display, it's not necessarily the way we wear them. So let's take a look at an example. This is Mr. Ken Watanabe back in 1987 playing the lead role as Masamune Date. First thing to note here is that the helmet is secured around the tip of the chin and the knot is tied between the lower lip and the tip of the chin. This allows for the helmet to be tightly secured around the head without choking yourself. And the knot used here is called a square knot in English. And interestingly, the concept of securing it around the tip of the chin is found in modern combat helmets as well. When you compare it to a modern combat helmet, even the straps on the side look very similar. I don't know how the modern combat helmet came to be like this, but at least this system works since it stood the test of time. The next tip I'd like to introduce is about style rather than functionality. Like when I first learned how to wear the helmet, I was told to wear the brim of the helmet right at my eye level. So quite literally, the top third of my vision is hidden. To illustrate this point, let's take a look at this. You know, I thought these looked like eyes from like a Marvel villain or something like Venom. And there was an old PlayStation game that clearly had the similar idea, so. For the longest time, I used to think these were eyes, but actually, this part, this brim part, is called a mabisashi, which translates directly to eyebrow brim. And why is it called an eyebrow brim? It's because if you wear it properly, that part covers up your eyebrows. And since it comes, covers it up and you don't see the eyebrows anymore, they decided to put it on top of it. So this, in turn, this indicates that if you wear it properly, the eyebrows should be underneath the brim. Okay, so then to check this, let's revisit our favorite Mr. Ken Watanabe. As we said before, the first key is the knot on the chin, and the second is the brim right above the eyes. And you can see that these are both true. Now let's fast forward in time and see Mr. Ken Watanabe in The Last Samurai. What? Right? <laughs> so this is where artistic direction comes into play. First of all, we know that Mr. Ken Watanabe knows how to wear the samurai helmet properly, right? He's done Date Masamune and many other samurai films and TV shows. So, I mean, clearly he knows. And second of all, my direct seniors, who I work with right now, were in that film shooting in New Zealand. And these are like straight up Japanese professionals, like working in the samurai stuff for like decades. So they would have said something. In the end, movie is fiction. So I believe that historical knowledge and you know years of know-how is there to flesh out the detail. Can you know, God resides in the details. And it's also good to spark new ideas, but it's not meant to be there to get in the way of creating that fiction. Then again, you know, the more knowledge you have, the more resources you've got to fully realize that world. So it's obviously very important to have these historical knowledge. All right, so that would be the end of part one, the trivia, and then we shall move on to part two, the how-to.